Hello out there in the youtube -iverse. it is Max, and I am also cross-dimensional, because I am also in the twitch -iverse at the same time, and I'm not the only one trapped between worlds. Worlds within worlds, Max. Yeah. Worlds within worlds. There's Dan. He's not, and he's not the only one who's here. Jared's somewhere. I don't know if he caught up with us or not. Press his face against glass as though in Phantom Zone. Okay, very good. So he's Goblin <laughs> Snoop. Yes. So... We are drafting Core Set 2021 because Wizards of the Coast was kind enough to let us do that kind of thing again. They just haven't learned their lesson yet. So they keep inviting us back. They do. So we are going to jump in, and we are currently jumping in to a draft. We have drafted twice so far, and the first time it went very well. The second time it went about as unwell as possible. So, first time we drafted... That's pretty accurate. We drafted Black Red Sacrifice in the first one, which went very well. And we drafted a Blue Red Control slash Blue Red Spells deck that wasn't quite able to find its footing and got completely decimated. So, we'll see what the packs bring us this time. And if you're joining us on the YouTube, I'll get my YouTube business out of the way while this fills up. Because we are doing this very late and I will not have time to edit little bits and bobs out, unfortunately for you. <laughs> so I'll fill in the void here like I usually do at the end. Every Thursday you'll find a video on YouTube from us, Superliminal Films, Superliminal Games. You will find us on Twitch every Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern. We do that kind of thing. You will also find us on various Saturdays, usually the second Saturday, but things shift around because that's weekends, and weekends are tough when you work full-time like we all do and try to stream. Um, so look for us. We are. You can find our schedule pretty much anywhere we are. It's not too, too hard. Um, other than that, superliminalfilms.com. You can find podcasts there that you can't find on the YouTube or the Twitch and all kinds of other sweet content. So I implore you to check it out when you get a chance. And thanks for watching this one, and I hope you dig it. And, of course, use the comments. They're down there for a reason. We yes. want to hear from you. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us what we did right. I like to hear it. Our chat certainly did, will tonight, hopefully. Did you love it? Did you hate it? <laughs> That's somebody else's sign-off. That is somebody else's shtick. He's, he is superior to us. Best teeth in the game, I heard. <laughs> One more seat, and we got this. We are on to Draft City. Which is a world within a world within this parallel dimension. Here we go. Worlds within worlds. <laughs> One more person just needs to click, and we are there. We are there. Okay, we got a Sporeweb Weaver in this pack, and that seems like kind of a slam dunk rare to me for Limited. There's a wild yeah. scourge in this pack. Um, also, uh, Trouble Snout, Hunter's Edge, which I think is quite good, and the Gorehorn. There's enough good green in this pack that I think it probably a lot of it won't wheel, but I think this Weaver is definitely good enough. Um, one four with Reach and Hexproof from a specific color, very hard to hit. Ghost Light, very good. As Shadows pointing out in the chat, I think it's an above rate card as well. Blue. Blue and green seem to be some of the best colors in this pack for us. I want to take the Spore Weaver, though, and enjoy making a bunch of Sapperling tokens, because that's what it does. We haven't gotten to draft green yet, so... We haven't gotten to play green yet, so... What's green? Maybe. Oh, I really just like a 1-4 for 3. Blocks really three. well. With reach. Yeah. Even gaggle? You just wanted to type the word gaggle. <laughs> um, Fungal Rebirth, pretty solid card. Let's just continue down like this token theme. It's in color. It's an uncommon we haven't gotten to try out. The Mauler has proven to me to be as good as I thought it might be. It's very above rate for what it is. And the Dread Maul is always the Dread Maul. Yeah. Uh, the Sage is fine. Dread Maul has been doing big beefums. So do we like the Rebirth or do we like the Mauler? I think those are our kind of... I mean, I like Big Beefums, personally. You like the Mauler. I like the fact that Rebirth is instant. Uh, I'm okay with it. I like Rebirth here. Hmm. I'm overruled. No, not necessarily. 
I mean. <sighs> Let's try the rebirth just because it's an uncommon and we want to test it out. You're on Tiger? Yeah, it's a close one, I think. The Tiger has been looking great. But I, I do want to try this rebirth because being able to get a high impact card back seems very good. We'll get a Tiger. Necromentia. Name of that card is cool as shit. There Art is. also cool as shit. Effect, fine. Yep. Get another, <laughs> the, get another stab. The, the effect tiger is not here. as cool as the name or the art. I agree with you. Uh, we can get the tiger or the truffle snap. I think I want the tiger. Uh, tiger just seems very good. I like tiger, it. tiger, tiger, burning bright. And plus, it's got good Randy Vargas art. It's good art. So now our goal is to just go mono green. Understood. <laughs> I don't hate it. I mean, I definitely want to see a powerful card to get us into another color. It's green. It's the new powerful color. But hopefully, oh. we're cut. Hopefully, there's enough that we're I think not. I want to try to call hard. it now. Bane Slayer in pack two. Okay. So. So there's a Ranger's Guile and a Return of Nature, which are not very good. So this is probably where we want to try to branch out into another color. Um, yes. Vryn Wingmare is fine, if we're, especially if we're going to be on heavy creatures. And especially when we get the Baneslayer Angel. Jared is calling the Baneslayer and he's sticking by it. There's Hobble Fiend, which I don't mind in green because green in this deck has the potential already of two cards spit out tokens. So the Hobble Fiend could eat the tokens and get bigger. It's true. So those are my two picks, I think, out of this particular pack. Hobble Fiend versus the Wingmare. Any opinions, you two gentlemen? Wingmare. I... <laughs> That's an opinion. Wingmare, Wingmare because he's calling for... Uh... BSA? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's the weirdest reason I've ever seen somebody pick a card, but we'll roll with it. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> all right. Green Sanctum here. So this can just pump our mana up. Yep. Um, Celestial Enforcer, not necessarily the best at what we're trying to do. Epitaph Golem, a Jared favorite. Really good. Feed of Resistance is a very good card. I think that is definitely a good point, Shadow. And I think there's not much else here. Like Green Shrine's cool, and I really like the art on this one a lot. Um, but I think Feed of Resistance is definitely the way to go. Yeah. It's basically like Counterspell and Combat Trick all in one. Yeah, I agree with that. Conditional Tra Counterspell, but still. Track down in this pack. Seems like it's a decent enough take. Better than the Chorister. It's okay. I like Kite's yeah. Freebooter a lot. Yo, Freebooter. We could, we could boot some free, but we know that Track Down will most likely make the deck. Yeah. Where Freebooter is kind of a spec pick, though it is a high a high value card because it can take stuff out of the hand and let us just roll our opponents while we go into like. Oh, man, I like three pirates. I know you do, Dan. What do you like? You like the specking on the Freebooter? No, I think being consistent, making a discipline pick might be the better idea. Okay, we're, we'll try. I know coming down. out of me, that's weird, but it is. Especially since you picked the wing mare because I said we're opening a bane slayer. Uh, yep. So, I think this is a pretty easy test in training for us. Giving something Trample is quite nice. Yeah. Um, it works. Which is a Baneslayer Angel. Baneslayer um, works good on our 1 4. It's pretty good. Okay, Selfless Savior in this pack seems like a pretty easy take for us here. Dub is fine, but I. If, so, if you've watched the channel before, you know historically I'm not the biggest fan of Auras. Dub. Dan really stepping into that dub there. Uh, <laughs> it's all over his shoes. I think this is a pretty easy secure the scene for us. A nice removal yes. spell is exactly oh what we're God, looking for. Oh my so good. And answers any non-land permanent, which is really impressive. There's a tiger in this pack, which I will happily take over selfless savior number two. I don't hate selfless savior. And I'd no, happily take tiger. it. Yeah, but I like the tiger here. See make the tiger sure, by the car. Make sure we got the big beefer. It does pair well. It does pair ni pair nicely with the Savior as well. So we'll take the Pegasus just to get the colors out of the pack. 
I hope to not have to run the Concordia Pegasus, but I don't hate jamming a Satessan training on it and attacking with 2-3 Flying Trample. White does seem open. I agree. We'll take a Prismite here. Better than a Return to Nature. We haven't seen too much impactful um, enchantments and artifacts, really. Like Capture Sphere probably being the most relevant, I'd say. Yeah. Not a whole lot that kind of just, like, Face Fetters is an uncommon. So there's no, like, pacifism at common in the set. The White got the uh, the instant speed destroy a tap creature. Yeah, I agree, Shadow. It doesn't look like uh, green's too highly valued with the tiger coming around. I don't hate a Defiant Strike. Don't love a Defiant Strike, but I don't hate it. I'll take it. Yeah. Again, something like that in the Pegasus, I'd be happy to not play, but... We'll see. I always feel bad when Red has to get a card like the Destroy an Artifact. Well, Jared, yeah. it was yeah. not a Bane Slayer. That's okay. That's okay. I think White is still open. We um, could really tax our opponents on non creature spells. We could Pride Malk in here as a three drop. We could Vryn Wingmare number two. Uh, Pride Malkin does completely cut green. Yeah. Going to the right. And we were kind of bit getting a bit. Not cut, but. Like, yeah, let's, the, the one tiger wheels, but... Yeah, let's take the Malkin over the this, second wing mare. Yeah, this will solidly put us into green on this side. I'll take a face fetters all day long. All day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Not giving up the ghost light, but it's not really for us at this point. The green picks are medium. Like, fetters works against planeswalkers, so take that to fairy. Mm-hmm. Another secure the scene here, there is a Tempered Veteran, which seems very good. <laughs> um, Gale Swooper I like, but I think it's just the Veteran here. We could use the 2-drop, and it is pretty above rate. Hunter's Edge also very good, though. We've got Secure and Hunter's Edge and Veteran. One of the the Secure or the Hunter's Edge, the Hunter's Edge won't wheel, but the Secure might. Uh, maybe. If not, one of these two white cards do. So I'm going to take the Tempered Veteran, I think. Um, I don't hate a temple either because it's still one of our colors, and we discovered in the first draft, kind of, or the first draft reinforced, how powerful those scries can be. In limited, especially, yeah. This looks like a rambunctious mutt versus a titanic growth. Or splashing for Nimbia. Nimbi? Nimbi. There's no Nimbi. 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 I misplaced the A. I also can't really <laughs> see it. I think we'll take the Mutt. The reason being, the Titanic Growth is a combat trick, and we already have a pretty good one in the uh, Feeder Resistance at 2 mana. And the, the Mutt can be reasonably good. It could take away something if we need it to. Okay. I mean, yeah, having that kind of this, like extra built-in destroy a thing. Ooh, Containment Priest. Yeah, I think we just take the Priest. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 in limited. It really isn't doing much else. Um... Not much. Flash bear, yep. Exactly. Another feeder resistance in this pack and not much else. Not much else for us. I'd be happy with the Deathbloom Thalid. I've been wanting to try the Red Shrine, but I like yeah. the Cur. Huh. We'll take the second feeder resistance. I have no problem sure. with that. Means we're Great probably not, to feed. We're definitely not playing Defiant Strike with two feet of resistance. No. Unfortunate. Looks like we're going towards white-green now at this point. Yeah. Which Started I'm green-white, now it's white-green. I'd be happier with this Baneslayer Angel that Jared was talking about, but... I think we all would, bud. I tried. I really did. I think this looks like a temple to me. Not a to revitalize... Temple give us a scry. Grub! <laughs> it's cool. It's like the temple and the grub because we can splash it then. Right? We'll take the temple. It's on, on half of our colors. I'll take a tap. Comes into play tapped forest that lets me scry. Another kite sail freebooter this late? Holy poop. I think we'll take the worded battlements here over the ranger's guile because again we're kind of covered on tricks. Worded battlements is okay. It's a little yeah. costly for an 03, but letting little things, these little 2-2s and 1-2s and stuff attack a little bit better doesn't hurt. 
Yeah, pick seven grub, yeah. We sell Concordia Pegasus, so. Yeah. I like all that. Yeah, we're trying to trying to get some stuff accomplished. We need some we need some high value picks, but if pack three is reasonable to us now that these colors seem like they've been kind of locked in, at least white. Um, if we can open a decent rare in color, and we might have a chance. It's a dub. I'll put it in the board. Yeah, I don't necessarily see us casting that, but you never know. Do we want the dub? Do we want the scoured barons in case that gives us a chance to splash black? It would give us a chance because then we have two sources. Yeah, let's take the scoured barons. Three. Yeah. Yeah, the scoured barons are a little less so than temple, but I agree with that. Another yeah, mutt. I mean, a life is nothing to sneeze at, though. No. Take a mutt. I guess mutt number two. Muttly. Secure the scene versus makeshift battalion versus Temple of Triumph. I think we just want the I like battalion. All those cards, but yeah. Three drop that hits pretty hard. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Secure's not bad because we do need a little bit more removal. We have right now we're on face fetters plus a secure. Everything else is just kind of beat them downs. Combat tricks, yeah. Okay. Nothing much here. We'll take the Unleashed Fury, because why not? Nothing here. We'll take a port... I don't hate a port call. is fine, but I'll hope to not run it. Alright, if not Baneslayer, the Gargoth. Get us one of those. Gargoth. I'll take anything that's decent. I'll take a decent uncommon. I'm not greedy. Just give me I'm something. Great. Give me something in color. Give me, give me, give me. I mean, I'd be happy with a BSA, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I'm a realist. What's taking so long? Seat's taking. Here we go. Mutt number three. Ah, brash Taunter. Not even an uncommon. Man. Oh. It's harsh. It's harsh. Snare Spinner versus Lanawar Visionary. Feels like it's a Snare Spinner because I think we just need twos. Good. <laughs> That's bad. That was a horrible sound. Please don't make it again. Oh, we don't even have anything beefy to, to like to play the visionary to draw towards. Like we're very mid range. I guess we'll take the spider. Gee, man, we're in trouble. Glorious yeah. Anthem is a is a good pickup. Hey, I'll take that. Of course, there's a Burl, Burl Fist Oak as well. And the acolyte. Yeah. But I think with our little peddlers and our like token bits. Glorious Anthem probably is the best. Yeah, we just need making all these little poopers something worth worth attacking with is pretty pivotal. More things that put counters would be helpful. Shadow, so, do you like the Pegasus over uh over the the uh the spinner? I like how defensive the how good on D the spinner is. Satessin training in this pack, Blossoming Sands in this pack, Gale Swooper as well, I think probably gets the nod here. Only two four drops, I think we kind of need the Swooper. Picks up another guy. Swooper! You don't want to be on D. Oh, I know you don't want to be on D. <laughs> <laughs> If we have more counter synergies and stuff already, I would definitely say I agree because the flying evasion would be super helpful. Just right now, we're just like on Satessin training and like the Pride Malkin. Like, we just don't even have a lot. The battlements, like, there's not a ton that pumps. If we had a little bit more targeted, like, put a counter on this guy. We have the Savior or whatever he's called. What's that boy? Tempered Veteran. But has to have a 1 1 counter on it already. So it's tough. Six to put a counter on. That's a lot. I yeah. probably too much. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not quite Gavany Township. No. Or, um... Vichugazi. Yeah. Well, that puts one ones in. What is taking so long on that pick? Web. Oh, man. Conclave Mentor. That may wheel. But there is a Bastry Solidarity here. Ooh. Yeah, that's kind of exactly what we're looking for. Another Tiger's good. Another Vryn Wingmare I wouldn't hate. But I think we got to take the Solidarity. Hope that this Mentor wheels. I think that's kind of the play. I, I don't think so, yeah. anybody else is going to be green-white, so... Heavens knows I don't want to be green-white. So right now we're up to 23 playables. Playables is... I mean, we definitely can do some... some cleaning up of this. So we'll see how things fare for us. Mm, not good. <laughs> not good. Not oh, even... My. Not even anything really good in black to splash. Nothing good. There's a track down. We'll just take it. I don't want to have to play two track down, but I'll put it in the board. Another feed of resistance. Skyway sniper. Titanic growth, short sword. Like, not much. I like the sniper, I think. It's a 1 2 reach for one, and it can deal some damage to flyers. If this were a best of three format, I'd be in, but I don't think there's a much better pick, to be honest. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Not wrong. Not wrong. Just hoping that green white card wheels. Hoping nobody gets itchy and hate, dra hate drafts it. Oh, Howling Giant was gnarly. Wildwood Scourge. X11 counters on it whenever one or... Counters put, on, I sure put a 1-1 counter on it. I think that's what we gotta take, because we just need a beefer. Yeah. He can come down wherever on the curve. And this one four one three crap. <laughs> Griffin Airy. If you gain three or more life, make a Griffin. Can't really be there. Swift response this late? That's impressive and surprising. Yeah. That's an easy pick. Imprising. Imprising. Expressive. Yeah. That's what it made me when I saw it. Okay, another Pegasus. May just end up being the pickup here. Yeah. Not much we can do. Yeah. Two uncommons in the same pack. Yeah. Gotta hope that it wheels. Okay. Secure the scene. Number two. I don't hate oh, Trouble Snout number one. I think we just... Nah, the counter is good. Do we want the secure or do we want the snout? Uh, what does our removal look like at this point? Still the same kind of... Two-ish things. Well, no, we just picked up the. Uh, yeah, we picked up another response. one. So I think the truffles. Grab it quick. Oh god. <laughs> it was close. Yeah. Just immediately click on any card and then hope. Yeah. It's like, oh, we suggest you take this off color uncommon. What? No. Blossom. Free blossoming sands here. Don't That's hate that. Pretty nice. Yeah. Cor Car uh, Corister here, maybe. Plus three, plus three for five isn't bad. We can put counters on it. It's possible. Throw a revitalize on the board. I don't think. Yep. Yeah, no. Feeder resistance number three. Wow. Didn't get our boy. Crazy. Yeah. Sad. Crazy sad. Crazy. Awesome. Crazy awesome. <laughs> okay. This is going to be a tough deck to make work. Alright, so how many creatures do we have? 18. So at least one of the Pegasuses, probably. 
I think so. I mean, unless we follow down Shadow's I- idea of maybe the one benefit of if we cut some green stuff that's kind of meant, like we like say we kept the Pegasus, got rid of the snares, the snare spinner. We'd also drop the the training. Could drop the track down because I'm not in love with it. Then we probably want to drop a three. Could be the rebirth. Could be. Could, eh, I think Battlements is a little too good in this deck. Yeah. Could be the Rebirth. I don't think we have really any really high impact cards we're looking to get back. Like, I think yeah. the the best card to get back with it is freaking Face Fetters. <laughs> Almost always. I don't think there's much here, though. Thank you, thank you. Disco Computer jumping in for the 21 month subscription. You join us and the 1 1. You join us uh, at the point in the draft where we are finished drafting. We're on green white and we are recording our video for tomorrow's YouTube as well. So I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's a deck. I'm not in love with it. Do I go... Is, I'm going through. I don't think, yeah. I don't think I can drop a land here. I don't uh, think. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm hairy on it, but... We'll see. It's going to be... Did I click the deck and not play? Play is important to click when you want to play. Generally speaking, the play blade is important to utilize. Mm-hmm. Play blade? No. Let him rip. Let him rip. Blade. <laughs> I can't wait for movies again. I want to see Mahershal Ali's blade, like, real bad. I can't wait for movies again because I want to see Bill and Ted. No lie. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It is tough. So we get a scry to try to find our second white for Glorious Anthem. We have stuff we can do in the interim. Nothing great. We're not casting a card till Pride Malkin, but I still think this is keepable. Uh, yeah. We're on the draw, which is a little unfortunate with a hand this slow opponent leads on Boros Temple, which is a little alarming. Okay, we'll definitely put Forest on the bottom. So, that's a nice a nice shift for us, but we drew planes. I mean, we needed of the course. planes. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, another one. Yeah. But did we need the planes? Yeah, and did we need the planes this way? So, opponent's holding up that. holding up Cancel Mana, which makes me a little, a little worried. So, I'm going to play the Pride Malkin. Because if anything's going to get countered, I'd rather it be Pride Malkin. It just went through. Hand is way too slow. Yeah, I agree with you. We might be able to overpower him. We'll see. Opponent's done Stone Cold nothing yet, so... And if they do anything... They're crabbing at got, us. We've got Fetters or Anthem. I mean, I'm going to get down the Anthem while I can. No need to attack here. Yeah. We can Just... follow up with potentially Weaver or the Mauler. Put it on like the very slow Jeskai deck. Battle Rattle Shaman. Love Battle Rattle Shaman. They're attacking us with the crab. Crab getting in. Yeah, crab people. Crab people. I beat you to it. He <laughs> did. We will play our spider because that will let us hold up the feet of resistance. Yes. And that crab is not attacking into us, even with the battle rattle shaman. Spider's why we're here, so let's go. Spider, spider did get us here. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Card's exactly why we're here, so it it better start pulling its ding dang weight. You're right, Shadow. There was a significant lack of three ones in the draft. There was not. There was an overabundance of large butts, one threes, which you didn't care for. 
I made a whole thing about three ones, and we wouldn't, didn't get there with them. Wouldn't need the spider if we had three ones. That's true. But you know what blocks three ones really well? One four. Epitaph golem. What? Epitaph golem. Who would choose to play that? Uh, are you Marinex? I'm not. Then I don't know. <laughs> huh. Me. <laughs> I mean, if Fugue for Tin Horns is to be believed, according to this here in the Telegraph, Epitaph wins it by a half. Face fetters potentially on the Epitaph Golem seems a little meh? But wasting a feeder resistance also seems a little meh? <laughs> I just... Yeah. You can attack with Pride Malkin if they double block, which I don't think they would. We could potentially get the Epitaph Golem. I just think that we telegraph it too much. I'm just going to play the Tiger and hold up Feeder Resistance. Yeah. Feeder Resistance yeah, gives us a lot of wiggle room here. I just don't want to spend a Face Fetters on an Epitaph Golem. Crash through. So other boys have Trample. It's a weird deck the opponents put together. Very weird. Another Crab. It's rare you see Crash Through and Crab in the same deck. Yeah. They're getting I think a... it was played as a cycle. I think you're right. Because they targeted their summoning sick crab, so. Pegasus will break a stalemate. Because nothing has reach out here. Looking to mill me. Okay. I mean, that is a lot. Of, the battle rattle's weird if they're looking to mill. The epitaph golem, on the other hand, I'm fine with. Yeah. Rebuying their cards is fine. But they're going for, like, the long mill. They're not even going for, like, the Teferi mill. <laughs> Better than a spider. <laughs> Shadow. <laughs> so, what do they elect to bounce is the question. And do I care? <laughs> That's the more important question. I don't think I care. Like, at all. No. <laughs> I mean, they can't hit the spider. The best spider. Low on playables, possibly a red bomb. That's an interesting call. I mean, you can't attack Jane Bisco computer them. make weirder calls. Well, yeah. <laughs> we want to watch him hate draft himself into, into an entire deck. Once? I think, no, I think just, I've seen that no. more times than once. I was going to say, I think it was. I think you're correct. I think that was more like two times. 2-4 two, attacks in the 3-2, fine. The crackback can't happen because of Spore Web Weaver. Much to Shadow Chagrin. Too strong. Too hexproof from blue. So the Pegasus is a nice stalemate breaker at the moment. They're going to go for the roaming Ghostlight getting the pump. Let's see if they attack. I will certainly throw a block here. If they try a trick, we have a feed of resistance as well. Um, I think I'm fine passing the damage here. Just get their flyer off the board. Yeah. Save the feet. Spider gives us a life, puts his head in the race, puts out a token... The token's a 2-2 from the Glorious Anthem. No real problem yet. <laughs> Meteorite. I don't think I care enough about the token to put a feed of resistance on it, so... We'll let the token go. Yeah. Like, I spent... Hard and a half to get that off the board. Yeah. Here's a Trouble Snout. We'll just put a counter on our Concordia Pegasus. Oh, can I put it on itself? Poop. Yeah. Alright, we'll put it on itself. Take a 4-4 four, four here. Uh, I don't hate fe uh, Faith Fetters on the, the Looter. That's an interesting call. 
it could definitely put them ahead in a long game. We've seen six, seven, eight, nine land out of them. Hmm, it's interesting. Just play another flyer, <laughs> if anything. The wing mare is tempting too. Yeah, let's get ahead in the race. I think that's a very fair point. Yeah. They don't have a lot of um, card equity right now, so they can't really do too much with the right. The loop, so. And odds of them yeah having anything really worthwhile seem kind of low. So just no blocks on this crab, that's fine. Yeah. I'm not too worried about that. We have five coming back in the air currently. Yeah, this is so gummed up. If we didn't have flyers, this would be a miserable situation. Would. Like, Wingmare looking good almost solely because of that. Right. I mean, it's a cheap flyer, right? Yeah. I'll follow you aside. You almost could have waited for that, because it would have made it fall off. Hmm, that's true. Well, it would have tapped it, though, right? Yeah, but then... Oh, this that was on your, your turn. Okay, never mind, yeah. I thought that was, like, on their turn, because they were worried about something. Thankfully, no. We'll gain a life as well, put us ahead a little farther in the race. And we have lethal in the air. <clears throat> and we have a fetters. Whatever they play. Yeah, if they play a flying block or we just get the fetters and kill them. Hey, Squee! Yes, looks like we're in okay shape for the second. So let's go ahead and attack in the air, because that's kind of what we got going. Looks like something else going to... Second uh, capture sphere on the wing mare. Jeez. That'll work. I don't mind that too much. And we get to play the makeshift battalion. They're going to loot, it looks like. We'll end the turn with the face fetter still in our hand. Yep, they're going to loot. And they do get to discard a red source. They have a roaming ghost light. Probably will bounce Pegasus, I guess, just to buy them the turn. Battle Rattle Shaman. Mm, Shaman. Shaman. Elect not to attack. Rambunctious Mutt will destroy their capture sphere. Or their epitaph goal. <laughs> <laughs> we have decent attacks, so other than that. Because creatures with plus one, plus one counters have ramp. We'll just try to set up the, the win in the air here. Um, pressing in. The makeshift battalion gets a trigger. They get a lot of blocks here, though. Like 2-5, two 2-5, five, 3-5, two 2-3 five, three five. Two three has crappy blocks, 2-2 two two has crappy blocks. But three of their creatures have, like, good blocks, not great blocks. They could double up on things. Just nah. wait. Yeah. Can't swing, yeah. Want to swing, but... You just swim in their crack. It's true. That's a very good point. You're all so smart. Thank you. Sorry, y'all in chat so smart. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Dark-sided. <laughs> Alright, Jared, you win. <laughs> oh, put it in the tank here. We may have them. We may have grinded them down into dust here. We've been pushing. 
grinding. We have. Loving, touching, squeezing. Rambunctious Mutt looking great. Yeah, I've been impressed so far. He came down and did a thing. Look at him. Look how happy he is. When does Tiger get counters? When creatures die. Emphatic words with powerful gestures. Clearly, this was playtime. <laughs> Tiger gets counter when a creature dies. At the end of turn, if a creature died, put a counter on it. At the end of your turn. Mm, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, not just any time, man. I don't read things. He's an attacking tiger. He is not a blocking tiger. Opponent pumped up a crab. Alright, I think we're just going to push for face fetters on the ghost light. Scoop step. Oh, no. They get to gain some life. They get to do a thing. I think we combat with everything here. I'll play the savior first. Yes. Because then that'll give me an attack with everything. That's going to be a tough attack for them to kind of put blocks on. Yeah, they have six blockers for our five non flying creatures. Yeah. I mean. Oh. They have a volcanic geyser for three. Shadow brings up a point where... It's... Yeah, but they have to block a lot. But I don't disagree with you. I'm going to push for it. Because we didn't come here for not exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you steal my catchphrase. And that also does give the makeshift battalion trample. Mm -hmm. for the, from the Malkin. Malkin? Malkin. Are they trying to double block? That's Don't ambitious. they know what the savior does? Yeah. That's, that's ambitious. That seems bad. That's ambitious. So they're currently taking 10. They have one more block they can throw. They're undoing double blocks. Actually, yeah, because they take more from the battalion because they only have three, tough, or three toughness in front of it. They're moving the double blocks. Um, now they're un totally undouble blocking. So right now the only things that are dying are makeshift battalion and the Malkin. What do we want to save? Well, before we go to damage, let me. Um, probably the Malkin. Okay. The trample is pretty good, but I mean, we all we lose the counter with the creature with trample. I don't know. Yeah. This is a handful of options. Okay, got the five five tiger as a blocker now. Oh, it untaps it. That's ridiculous. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, no, card's great. And they may bounce it back to our hand, but even if they do, they got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine coming in. And one damage is lethal. Right now they match us in blockers, though. But making profitable blocks is harder for them. It is tricky. Much like rocking a rhyme that's right on time. Hey, Gale Swooper. So, I think we just swoop up the... The 5-5. Five, five. And we five, win. Five. Well, we, we, they can block with the ghost light. Trample. Oh, yeah, got a counter on it. We're good. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, they have cancel mana up. Yes, if last card is cancel, we have to go another turn. Okay, they scooped. Five, five, flying trample. I hear those are good. Yeah. All right, we managed to synergize our way to one win. 
Let's see what we can do. Synergies. Okay. Elevation AV. So we have Priest into Malkin into Solidarity with a Face Fetters as removal. Keywords are nice to have. So yeah, I think this is an acceptable hand. We're on the draw. I'd rather be on the play here, going two into three. But you cannot determine those things. No, unfortunately not. Opponent plays a jungle hollow. Menace is a good keyword, especially in limited. It's got a Garrick's Harbinger. Okay. Save a kill spell for that guy. We have one. We do. What is that the flavor text from? The uh, carnivorous death carnivorous parrot. Carnivorous parrot. That's yep. Parrot. We could play a makeshift potential. When this thing deals combat damage to a player, look at the top. That many cards uh, from the top of your library. You may reveal a creature card or Garrick Planeswalker from them to put it in your hand. Seems very good. Uh, yeah. Do we want to just play a makeshift battalion and hope that disincentivizes our attack? They're on. They're going into four mana, so they they're not on the uh, the five drop yet. I think we do. Shadow, are you telling me that the fan of Rakdos's favor, one of their favorite keywords, is menace? <laughs> Shocking, really. Okay, into solemn. See if a third color arises. Nope, just forest. So opponent is green black. Maybe just mono green and they. Oh no, it's a jungle hollow, not a temple. Um. Hmm. We could face fetters on the harbinger. I don't hate that. We can't attack though. Past the solemn is the problem we have right now. Not yet. Um. I guess we just hold for... The face fetter's not bad. I think we should... Yeah, this would be mana efficient use the face fetters. Yeah, I agree with that assessment. I don't want to give him a card. Colossal Dreadmaw. That can be swift responded to. Swiftly responded to. Yep, because next turn we can play the, the pride and then still leave up the swift response. Yeah. We'll give it to the makeshift battalion. Makes it a 4-3. It just kind of looks like we're setting up for double blocks. What we could do... Canopy Stalker. Must be blocked. You gain one life for each creature that died this turn. What we can do here is we can put triple blocks on and see if they do anything. Or double blocks, even. I think double blocks work there, right? Yeah. They immediately pass the damage, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill it with this. I just wanted to see if we could get a trick out of their hand. Been nice. I would have been quite, quite nice. So we'll play the tiger. Do we want to counters attack? Canopy stalkers. I like counters attack. Canopy stalkers a little annoying though. You would? Yeah, because I wouldn't want the Canopy Stalker to come back at us too hard. Yeah, and the, the battalion gets to become huge this way. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice trigger there as well. And they're tra we're trading off the board. And they take a bunch of trample damage. And a creature died. Yep. So the tiger becomes harder to deal with. Our eggs are a little in two baskets, but it's kind of how we have to run it. We've had more eggs in more baskets before. Well, I like eggs in more baskets. Eggies in a basket is delicious. I guess we just attack. Yeah, we can take a couple hits from that thing. And if they block, 
we still have a five five. Yeah. Actually, be a six six because then the creature would have died. Too many hits with the snake. I mean, the sa the saber tooth baller is now gigantic. Yeah. They have another seven three though, and a track down. So they got the double spell here, which is not great for us. Two to the no. bottom, one on top. They put a Thrashing Brontodon into their hand, which is very bad. That's extremely bad. I don't like it. No. no. Um, we draw planes, so we are in big trouble. Oh, boy. Uh, so what you're saying is that we should uh, probably just still attack with the six things. Another Canopy Stalker? Jeez. Come on. And we draw planes. Shocking. Yeah. You know. You know. Brontodon still hasn't cashed itself in for the face fetters yet. I feel like we are in a very bad position here, despite being at literally double their life total. Uh, I don't hate our spot, though. Because that just must be blocked. Yeah. But it doesn't have to attack, which worries me. There's the Titanic growth we played around earlier. <clears throat> now seven three is freed up to attack. We need a we need a spell here. Land will not do it. Okay, we drew another mauler. It's not the best spell ever, but And blocks a seven three once. Blocks a seven trades with a seven three. Yeah. Trades with a four three, so I'll live with it. And the one four checks their three four, so we're not in the worst position, but it's on a razor's edge right now. We're up ten life. We got that going for us. We can afford to take a couple of hits, but at some point we need to stop drawing land. Wildwood Scourge. 7-3 coming in. Got a block with the Tiger. Oh, they had a Ranger's Guile. Oh, boy. Wow. Playing enough combat tricks, I guess. Oh, and, you know, not flooding out. No. No, they've done pretty good. I mean, they did draw an extra card off of Solemn. Yeah. And they got out of land with Solemn. Can't really double block here. Taking 13 is pretty bad. I think we kind of just have to take it, though. See what we draw to try to balance this board. An opponent drew a follow-up. And there's another land. Wow, come on, deck. Not like this. Right. They just do right a threat that slams everybody equal. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree with you, Squee. I guess we just double block 7 3 and just take 6. Not really good blocks anyway. I'm not also not just for block block. I'll take a threat off the board at the minimum. I don't know what we can draw here is the problem. Certainly wasn't Blossoming Sands. Come on. It happens. One thing green, green and white don't do is draw cards. It's about when you draw them. Yep. That's very true. Wasn't anticipating the Ranger's Guile there. That was crazy. Yeah, it was rough. Opponent had a pretty good run of cards there. We go first on the scry with the temple into the Malkin, I think is kind of good enough. The problem is we want more spells and we want planes. So maybe for that reason we don't keep this hand. Because we're trying to hunt for things, two things at once. So I think we'll, we'll mulligan this one. This is a better mix of land and spells for sure. I think we can just put back worded battlements and keep this hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's true. So 
So blue comes down into green into Jeskai Elder. And we will be able to Weaver. So that helps a little bit there. We still have Face Fetters plus Mauler. If we don't draw anything, we have the the, the Malk in here. They play a Visionary. Malk and then, then temp, uh, Tempered Veterans, nice. Yeah. Let's play the Mauler here. If we draw a land next turn, we can Malk in plus Tempered Veteran. That'd be great. Be a, it'd be something. It's most of the cards in our hands, so we have a lot to overcome from our opponent. Yes. But, yeah. We are trying to synergize, and that is what this hand does. You are all correct. Visionary's kind of gross in draft. It's It draws a card, and it's a 2-2, two -two, and it adds mana. It kind of does everything. Significant. green does. Yeah, significant enough body, comes down quick enough, adds mana, draws cards. Hard to be upset with that. Baron. Huh. That. That's cool. I think we play the Malk in here and give the Mauler a counter. Yeah. Um, I don't think we can attack because they get a pretty good double block. They get We just get their Ty Tyranodon. Yeah, no. I wouldn't yet. Never thought about what that card did in the draft for me. Yeah, it's good. And the Baron Elvish to pick Elvish. it up and put it back down is very good. Yeah. Elvish Elves. Yeah. It's a good bit of card advantage here out of the blue-green deck. I'll recast the Visionary. Play another green source. Okay, we got our fifth land. That's nice. Now I do believe we can attack the Mauler. Pretty obvious that we have a trick here, but... Yeah. Uh, they might just think that we think a 4-4 trampler is good enough to start pressuring them. That may be true as well. Play Veteran end the turn. And we still when we got feet we play around the uh, the flying counter spell at the moment. Yep. Browsing reed. Also like face fetters here. Face fetters looks good. Feet looks good if they want to attack into our weaver. Yep. We're running into counter spell pretty hard here though. I think we do have to block. That's why we put the spider in the deck. We'll try to try to feet. If they're countering our feet, it means they can't counter the face fetters. So there's value there as well. <laughs> well, it landed, and they have protect. It has protection from their entire deck. <laughs> problem with naming green is protection from damage means we don't get a little duder, but protection from their entire deck is nice. Kind of worth it. Yeah, I think so. Gives a counter for the veteran. So now the veteran is a card they have to kind of start to think about. Yeah, they're going to capture Sphere of the Veteran. Gale Swooper. I think we can just attack with Tiger here. And I think we just get our two for one with face fetters. I like it. Better than playing the swooper right now. <laughs> so we don't end up holding that swooper saying that about four or five more times. Why not attack Malkin too? It's a good question. 
Um, the trample could be more valuable down the road, I think, is a reasonable answer. Um, I don't necessarily want to give up the board position. But you may be right, that may be the better attack. I didn't want to trade it for just an elder that's never going to get through. Is my is my thought process. So, I think we swoop her here. Tiger still has decent enough attacks, but it can get double blocked now. So, we'll swoop her. It landed. Looks like mana is being tapped. Draw three cards and discard a card. Card's good. Quick swift. Or quick sift. Swift sift. That's the way I, I should say it. It's a good way to say it. You're tapping very fast but manually. And now untapping. <laughs> and now retapping. They're not sure what they're doing. You know, I'm getting that inclination. <laughs> Clearly we've put them into something of an emotional pickle. Oh no, reach. Yep. So let's play the Pegasus. And let's play our savior. They probably have some sort of draw so that the Gnarled Sage would get some sort of toughness bonus. That's why they wanted to make sure they left two blue up. Or they've canceled. I think or they would have canceled the Savior. So yeah. I'm going to attack with the Mauler and see what they do. Because the Savior pairs very well with the Mauler for a plethora of reasons. Let's see if they bounce. They have an opt. Okay, sure. The emergency opt, followed by the other emergency opt. <laughs> so they get plus two toughness there. So you've drawn two or more cards this turn? Yep. That's fine though, it gives us a 5-5 five, five that's untapped. Yeah, it's a crazy board state. <laughs> Always the threat of cancel, says Doridius. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Deridius, welcome. He's, he was here earlier. He snuck back in. And crazy board state. Yeah, crazy you mean like clogged. <laughs> but we're in green-white. That's what we do in green-white. Oh, yeah. Gumming up the board. Gums up the board. Sneaky, sneaky. You are blocks. sneaky. You are sneaky jumping in here. Sneaky, sneaky, cheeky, breaky. That's on 13 cards left in deck to our literal double. <laughs> Maybe we just wait him out at this point. I don't think we can play through all that, do you? No. <laughs> How long do you want the YouTube video to be? Yeah. <laughs> we'll play another Pegasus. I don't think we can attack. Uh, attack with the other Pegasus. Let it die and have a 6-6. Six -six. There you go. That's like we're playing the Black Red Sacrifice deck all over again. Waker of Waves. Ugh. The Mutt That's... will let me destroy the Capture Sphere, which is a start. That'll be good, because... Yeah, we need to find removal for that Waker of Waves, and we've drawn pretty well. Yeah. We're only on five lands, so... What does the Veteran do? The Veteran puts a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature with a 1-1 one -one counter for one white, and then if you pay six, it puts a 1-1 one -one counter on any creature. Put an electing to draw three cards and not bounce three creatures? Uh... 
They got to have sure. a way to get that back, right? Are, are they are they cheating and they have a Thassa's Oracle in their deck? I don't know. They also did not <laughs> attack at all. What? What? I'm just going to pass. I'm going to hold like, the speed of resistance. Are they just fucking with us at this point? I'm not sure. It's a very strange one. And they're, they're continuing to draw cards. This is great. They're drawing off. There has to be a card that wins them the game on the spot, right? Like, they have to be drawing to a win con. Would hope. But what what wins them? I don't know. It's just I'm just going off behavior, not necessarily knowledge of the set. But just their behavior would dictate to me that they have a way to win the game based on the fact that they've elected to go digging. They may just have gone, I have to cobble together whatever I can because I'm too far ahead in cards to beat them. Like, I have to just try. Yeah. Uh, veteran. Put a counter on a creature with a 1-1 counter. We'll do the spider. Okay, another tiger will do. It puts us down on the, the feet of resistance. But I don't think there's much we can really do there. Nah, we still have the... Uh... The veteran ability, at least. Yeah. Yeah, veteran can make the tiger a 5-6. Or a 3-7 on the weaver. Weaver's getting close enough to big enough to survive the waker of waves attack. Cards in library. For us is 22. For them is 4. So they do get a they do get a golem. Or, a, is this a golem? Construct. Cool looking construct. They have a ghost light. They can't bounce the weaver, so I imagine they're going to bounce the mauler with two counters on it. Probably. <laughs> Their board's so tiny. They're doing the veteran. Oh, okay. I will. They've got to just be doing this at this point to play all the cards. I guess so. I think they're dead in the water in a couple turns. You don't see an insta win in the set. That's good. Yeah, I looked as well. Thank I you for checking. Yeah, I think they just realized too late that they were too far ahead. They may still be able to attack us, and they looks like they're going to right now. They're going to scry to the bottom. I mean, it is still a very scary board. Like that, This is a two-turn clock for them. I don't want that. Three-turn with all of our blockables. Five six. Um, two six can block Baron. O three can block a two five. O three can block a two three. Two four can block this two two. One two. I'm kind of fine letting the elder hit because that'll mill them. Two three. We we'll have to throw something away here. Malkin might be a little valuable, so let's go. Mauler blocking. Can you move the artwork, please? Thank you. We'll just Never. throw Mauler in front of seven seven. And yeah. I guess two two can freely block the the elder. I mean, if they have a trick or whatever, that's fine. But those are my blocks. Yeah, I think they're going to lose this one. <laughs> you won five mana means you can only really... <laughs> yes, correct. I can only single spell. Well, right now I can actually double spell. Let's temple. Move the forest to the bottom. Because I'm sure our top of our deck is just all land. Most likely, yeah. Alright, so we got to go through five turns of opponent. Oh, you might have to bounce three creatures. Okay, good call. Um... I don't really think we can afford to attack because they just have a ton of stuff and a bunch of it's colorless. I think we're just kind of on the Dan plan of waiting it out, sadly. Well, yeah, they have four <laughs> blockers. Yeah. Yeah, they're going right back to the chum bucket. Scry to the bottom, so I think they're out of spells. 01 will block 7-7. Seven, seven. 5-6... Two six can block five seven. 
Two five can be blocked by five six. Two three can't really be profitably blocked anymore. So two four will block three three. Four four and three two over here. I guess three two and two two will trade. So right now we're lined up to take two and eight is ten. Do we want to take that much? I guess Pegasus could block a 4-4. Four, four. Take a little less. I'd love to be able to get to a place where we're taking cards off the table. We are slowly but surely. And we're every yeah, this time... takes a couple off. And the spider's adding one for us every time, too. That's true. There's a forest. As expected. Mm-hmm. But that does mean we can put a counter on anything and and still have feet of resistance. No, because no, it costs six. Oh yeah, we're one short of one. To... Yeah, we're going for the the full attack again. We'll go five seven here, seven seven here. Five six will block three three. Two four will block three three. Okay, they scooped. It's like I can keep going through the motions if you want. If you have nothing in your deck, yeah, though, just... yeah, we can keep blocking this as long as you want us to, opponent. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's a slog. Not the world's quickest deck we have built. Oh, good, we have a draft no. event entry. <laughs> Yeah, yes. they completely misplayed by drawing cards instead of bouncing creatures. We were all pretty flummoxed by that one. <laughs> Why did they draw three cards? At that, that point, that was their failure to analyze where they were at in the game. If they had done it the other way, they would have had a chance. You think you like, you like to draw, really? I think they were too far behind. They knew they had bigger creatures. But do you think bouncing our three best creatures and attacking puts us in too bad a position? That was my thought. Cause it's not like we had anything out that was spectacular. The spider was the best thing because it couldn't have been targeted. But other than that... Opponent goes first. We can do Savior on one, Sands on two, and then Weaver on three, I think is reasonable. Try to set something up that way. It's definitely a reactive hand. But we'll see. When it goes planes into car into chorister, so we'll play our savior. You bet they bounce there. That's probably a fair assessment. Yeah, whale or shark might have done it. Now, I played Lord Tupperware before. No, that's true. Lord Tupperware is not an idiot. I've been trying for a while to remember why that name is familiar to me. I know blocks here. I'm not too worried about their 1-1. One, one. And our dog has more value down the line. Yep. Um, We have no 4 drops, but we have no 2 we really want to play. Could be if the opponent does something to the Chorister, we may want to kill it, though. And since we have no fours here, I'm tempted to just wait on the Blossoming Sands. I'll attack them back and see what they do. Okay. They're going to drink some milk. Put us all over the life gain plan. Okay, battlements. I think at this point I probably just take... Mm, no, I stymie it so hard. Yeah, I'll take the hit. I stymie it so hard with the spider. Yeah. Especially with the dog out, too. 
They can't do anything to the spider. That one four spider just really blocks. It really does some work. I'm impressed. Uh, it's just blue hexproof, not protection. Right, correct. To answer Matt, Matt's question. Oh, thank you, Jared. I didn't even see it pop in there. Yep. Let me know if the stream is still playing for you guys. I mean, I wouldn't be able to see what you're doing otherwise. Okay, because I just got a network error on the preview. That's why I asked. That makes sense. Um, let's play Truffle Snout, put a counter, and play the Blossoming Sands here. I think that's an effective use of mana, plus the counter from Truffle Snout is, uh, is pretty good. Yeah, it lines up well on this board at the moment. Yeah, it's a We're tough... talking for days over here. Squee and Shadow having a conversation. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, we were blocking for days over here. We still have the swift response, though. Yeah, it doesn't have vigilance. This is a spot where Sarah Angel would be better. Mediocre Matt, go home. That's a card. That's a card. That's our card. I called that, but I called it for the wrong deck. I'm sorry. That's our card. It's my bush. It's funny because 10 years ago, Baneslayer Angel was the most busted ass card they could have possibly made. And now it's just like, I mean, we had Lyra. Let's swift response to the BSA and see what they do. Okay, nothing. Cool. <laughs> so I mean, they're probably planning on. Still very good, but. Family. So I don't need all of it. I just need this. Because it gets four toughness. And whatever one they put first, we'll put protection on. So this is the trouble snouts first? Yes. I believe that's how it is. Yes. Goes from left to right. And we get a damage on the Weaver, which makes a token as well. So quite good. To play the Mauler. Play away. I think now we just go with the Solidarity. Yeah, I say we do that and swing at the hell in. I agree with your swinging Helen plant. Puts him to 15. Gives us a 4-4 Mauler back on the ground. That's, that's huge against the Sky Scanner, but are they really going to be swinging with the Sky Scanner? Out of frustration, yes. They got the Steed. Oh, and they scoop. Jeez, okay. I mean, we had a 5-5, five, five, a 2-5 that blocks for days, a 4-4. Four, four. Right. Like, we were out of cards in our hand, but our cards are just so much better than theirs. Yeah. Individual card quality won us that uh yeah. won us that game. May have scooped when he lost Baneslayer. <laughs> I mean I imagine they were intending that Baneslayer to do a lot of work, so I mean sometimes you have a mythic rare, right? Yeah. We've certainly done it before. Yeah. Always happy to take down a mythic rare with a common. Actually, we've done it with that card's uh ideological cousin, Lyra. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that draft of so I, many years ago. I do. We were just like, oh, we drew Lyra, we won the game. Oh, we didn't drew Ly draw Lyra. We did not win the game. Uh-huh. But it was funny because it worked out pretty statistically close to that. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, we won. It was just crazy. Dominaria, that was so grindy. Yep. Opponent goes first. We have three three drops, but we can cast them all, so... 
not the best hand ever, but an acceptable limited hand. But it's cycling a crash through out of the gate, which is interesting they kept and then immediately did that. So I'm curious what the texture of their hand is. It's going to be an interesting game. To an Alpine Watchdog. We draw more cards we can't cast at the moment. <laughs> Always feels great, Mediocre Matt. Always feels great. Opponent on the weird deck. I'm going to play Vryn Wingmare in case their plan is to play a 4-drop spell. This will slow them down. I probably won't block anything with the Wingmare. But this will slow down the spell gorge or weird getting gigantic. Yeah, it will. Or it's Hopefully gonna... long enough for us to find an answer. Yeah, we need something pretty quickly. Put a drums on our face again. And place a Chandra's Magmut. Gale Swooper's not exactly what we're looking for. I think we have to play the Makeshift Battalion here. Because we have to hope to Pride Malkin next turn is my, my thought. No, you did not tell yeah. me you cracked a foil death corona. Holy moly. <laughs> nice. You didn't happen to casually mention that. Boy, over here just still cracking packs like it's ten years ago. It's really ridiculous. If you feel the need, yeah, if you feel the need to get rid of that at a point, consult me before you do. I may want that. Max does love Godzilla things. I love Godzilla things and also that particular death corona. <laughs> Because every, I mean, who does? How much is that card worth? A buttload, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was. It's worth a little bit less now getting than it, it was. Getting it graded, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a good idea if it's in, if it's packed fresh. Why not? Oh, man, this is rough. I, next turn, cool. next turn we can play the mutt. So I think we have to trade off here for a card we can. So we'll just get rid of the watchdog. And the Magmut's going to come down and not do much, but it's going to be a 3-4 blocker, which is semi-relevant at the moment. The Pride Malkin can keep it going. What does this card do? It's got a million pieces of text on it. Search your library for a card named Alpine Watchdog and or Igneous Cur. Reveal them, put them into your hand. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus or X number of attacking creatures. Okay, so they have one Cur, one Watchdog. Okay, let's mutt. So three, four blocks on this board pretty well. I mean... Yes, I, I agree. I agree, Matt. They're definitely ahead. Face fetters on the mutt. It's a problem. We dead here? Yep. Well, you're dead. Jeez. I mean, spell gorge are weird. I'm still confused about the hand, why immediately they went for cycling the crash through. Yeah. Like, that that's the only part of that game that didn't make sense to me, was that particular part. Interesting. Maybe they kept drawing into those lands because they had a really good hand otherwise. Yeah, or maybe they were looking for a particular color, maybe they were looking for the white so they could get the watchdog down quickly. I'm not sure. Eighty dollars last you checked. Twenty-five. I'm following this now. <clears throat> the chat. He is slow. Yeah, I was thinking about the game, still trying to parse in my head where exactly they were doing that. Um, I was trying to parse the hell they were doing. Opponent goes first on a hand that's very reactive. Like we can Wildwood Scourge as a two-two, but then we're not really doing much else. We're not even casting this glorious anthem. Secure the scene costs five. I don't think we can do it. This looks a little bit better. It's not great by any stretch. Again, I think we have to bottom the battlements. It keeps coming up. It does. <laughs> I feel bad. I'd like to see what it could do. I mean, battlements it feels like it's torn between what it is and what it wants to be. A little bit. Flavor-wise, it's good. Yes. Get in there, Dogie. Or discarding Waker of Waves. Look at the top two cards of your library. One into your hand, one into your graveyard. Big 
It is doing what you want. <laughs> Change it to bottom mints. Should I leave the stream now? No, you're fine. <laughs> you're hosting, so no. I see. Continue the relentless assault of one power creatures. I mean, what are they going to do? <laughs> Let's us next turn Pegasus plus hold up swift response. I like... In the face of the anima, might not be a bad thing. I was oh. going to make an anima joke, but it just didn't seem right. King of the Hills in anima. <laughs> I've seen people pushing for that. It drives me so wild that... There's an entire culture in Japan of people who have the reaction to King of the Hill that people in this country do to, like, Naruto and things of that nature. Right. It's a good show, though. It, it actually was. I agree. And it makes sense that they would have that same reaction, because the voice of Naruto is in America is the same as Bobby Hill. Yeah, it's true, too. Because I forget. It all it all comes together. Shadow it all wants, adds up. Shadow wants to know what you mean, Dan, by their reaction. And what is it? Oh, yeah, uh, basically how we have people in this country who are super way into anime. There is a huge underground subculture in Japan of people who are way into King of the Hill. Like, I don't know if they have fan conventions about it, but pretty much everything else. Oh my god, I don't want to see cosplay of it. Like, that has to be a thing, right? Sure. They love themselves some propane. <clears throat> Gnarled Sage. Breach, as we learned. Ooh, yeah. that's the. We have to get rid of that uh, protege. Because that's unblockable now. Yeah, Protege is a bit of a problem. We can certainly swift it gives the, Yeah, we can swift response. Yeah, and it, it and you you make a good point. Is it so we could deal with the anima because that's dealing us the damage, but the Protege is also letting that happen, and it's letting them po like sort through cards, which is very powerful. Yeah, I feel so, like the Protege is a bigger problem here. I agree it because also, as we keep pointing out, it's enabling the anima and the sage as well, giving it plus so plus two. Yep. And that card's good. I don't think there's much we can do here. We don't have any power to even, like, try to use the counter from Feet of Resistance to push over on the Sage, but... We'll see. They definitely have the bigger dudes. Gail's... There's an article on comicbook.com from last August about how... Uh... There are fan forum arguments over the best way to watch King of the Hill, either subtitles or a dub track. That's pretty great. <laughs> Always subtitles. The, the same arguments that we have in this country. Yep. Yeah, for me, I like Akira with a dub track and Cowboy Bebop with a dub track. Um, I don't know if there's much else. Dragon Ball Z. <clears throat> Uh, because I initially watched it this way, um, uh, Witch Hunter Robin with a dub track, just because I was watching it on Adult Swim. So what's happening here? Hunter's Edge from the anima to the weaver? Yes. That doesn't work, right? Well, no, because the Hunter's Edge is dealing the damage. It's, okay. it's hexproof, not protection. Okay, so I have to feet here. Yes. Yeah, please. That'll give us a 1-1. One, one. If I give it pro blue. Or pro green, pro blue. The creature deals the damage? Yes. Okay, so I give it pro. It's already got pro blue, so I'll give it pro green. Well, no, it has hexproof from blue. Uh, that's, that's true, different. too. Yes, you gotta give it pro blue. If you want to prevent all the damage. Dredius, I think there are a lot of things that don't. You gave it pro green. <laughs> well, it still worked because then that just counters the spell. Yeah. Pro blue, the spell would have resolved, but no damage would have been dealt. You had to give it pro neither color. Oh, good point. I like that. Yeah. Very good, Shadow. 
Correct. That's what I was trying to figure out. How to get the 1-1. One, one. Hunter's Edge. Um, I think we sacrificed the dog this time. Well, what's it? Yeah. So they, in that exchange, got a feet and a dog. Which isn't too bad. Definitely gives us a mana advantage. Yeah. The problem is this Gnarled Sage is just completely wrecking us. I mean, it's a big chunk. I think we're just... We need... Removal. That's a good... A good point. We do. That's about it. Yep. Right now we're at seven spells to our opponents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spells. So we're definitely behind in casting spells. Net looter. That'll do it. Yeah, looter definitely. I mean, if there's an island in their graveyard, point in case. Okay, there's a Wildwood Scourge here. All their mana up makes me nervous. So I think we just play a planes and pass the turn for now. I don't like just sitting on it, but I also don't just want to throw it into all this open mana. No. 5-5 five, five coming in. Unblockable. Miss M19, M20. Um, I guess now we kind of have to Wildwood Scourge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have we a good, for good amount of mana for it. We could do it for five in case they have the one crappy counter spell. But well, I think a... I think we need the six six because of the do. five five on the board. I agree with you though. It's, it would be better to play around if we could. That's yeah, just resolved. Hmm. Well, this like this gives us some pressure. We'll see what opponent draws here. Opponent's drawn hard on land, even though they did do uh, they did get one loot out of their protege. And their Waker of Waves. Presumably they have a land on the bottom. I do like their sleeves as well. It's a good sleeve. It is. Yeah. I like that a couple things are poking over the border and everything. It's pretty cool. Gen of Wishes. <laughs> and Palaka Worm. That's fair. I remember Gen of Wishes being absurd in that format. It always was. Mm-hmm. Rousing Reed on the Gnarled, sh gnarled sa Sage. That's going to hurt. Oh. So that's on almost. So I think we do have to soak up damage where we can. We can't block the, the one. Although we could just block with the spider. Let's block with the spider. So it's two. So they get to deal five. Actually, we can triple block. Is that enough? That's seven. Should I run this triple block? Um, They've got three cards in hand. We have nothing. I... Yeah. They have to pump a lot of power into this thing to kill all our dudes, though. We have 11, power, 11 toughness right now on this. Like, they might get two if they pump it. Okay, let's see what their follow-up is. Island. I think we just attack with everything but the token. They trade with Pride Malkin and go to five. Okay. <laughs> Token versus five, five. <laughs> we have two flyers. Two flyers that are lethal. They have to win around this, this Saperling token. Could be the bounce three creatures. Bounce three creatures attack for five is big problems. They, they could just yep. draw the cards in that case. Because I would give it unblockable. Scoop it, you attack and then scoop. <laughs> I'm curious to see what they have. They're hovering their lands. Looks like they're really going through the motions here. They're way deeper in their deck than we are. They're manually tapping for four mana. Five mana. Hovering the Wildwood Scourge. They are taking control of our tapped creature. And they are playing a 2-1. Okay. 
that oh. could give flying to something. We draw, and one. they have the mana for it. They do. Christ. So we attack with everything. They go th one thing. The five can go into the air and block. It the two one could block the three. No, because it only it can't they give it to the five five. Yeah, they give it to the five five, which could block one thing. That means two three get by, and then we're out of uh, out of gas here. So I think we just play a forest and pass the turn and hope to draw our uh, our mutt that destroys an enchantment or an artifact. Yeah, close game. Close game. They're going to give flying to the anima. Likely to the guide, the glide master as well. Right, everything. If that's the case, I think we block the Glide Master with the Pegasus, take the Anima hit, and block the 6-6 six, six with the 1-1. One, one. We lose 1-1 one, well, one and nothing else. If they give everything flying, we can't block the 6-6. Six, six. Or we can't block with the Zapperly, I mean. Yeah, if they give everything flying. That takes up 9 mana, which they have. And they have plenty. That's what I would do if I were in their, in their shoes. Because we could profitably block the glide master chump with the three two and take five okay they're coming in so i guess we double block the five five take six go to two they get to kill one of the two flyers yeah And if we draw the mutt, we're in we're in business. One time, I'm gonna pat the dog, pat the dog, pat the dog for the dog mutting. Yep, that's the the pats for luck here. They probably didn't expect that. They should have given the other thing flying and attacked with everything. Veteran is not going to do it. Nope. They can give two creatures flying if they see it. I'm going to attack with the 3-2 three, the three flyer and we'll scoop him up. We tried. The dog rolled over Respect. for us. Yeah, good game. Good game. Nothing wrong with that. Very close. Oof. So, a bit of a tough run for our green-white not quite fatty enough uh, synergy, not quite synergistic enough. Kind of just felt like a, uh, a bit of a loss across the board, like just not quite right in any of the boxes that Green White wants to be checking in this format. So there you go. Um, if you like the video, you know the deal. Subscribe. I'm not going to go through the whole rigmarole again. But thank you so much for watching, and until next time, you got to cast more spells. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>